Welcome to our fall revival, excuse me, our spring revival at the campus of New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. Y'all have to excuse me if I seem a little befuddled. My wife is in China on a mission trip, so I'm just kind of walking around in a fog. But it's great to have you here today. We are so delighted to have with us uh, Fred Luter, Pastor of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church, Michael Adler from Shanks Mountain Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, leading us. We'll talk more about them as the week unfolds. We want to give as much time as possible to the service itself. But more than anything, we are delighted to have with us today the Holy Spirit of God. We are a religious community. We spend our day every day going to class, studying the Bible, memorizing the names of the twelve spies who spied out the promised land, studying church history, theology, working with all the various processes of the seminary, keeping it operating with all the many different staff positions that we have going on. But in spite of being a religious community, surrounded by the body of Christ every moment of our days, literally, we are a community that constantly needs to be in intimacy with God. And the purpose for having this week, our time of revival, is for you to answer the question in your heart. Right now, are you closer to God than you've ever been before? If not, why not? This is an opportunity for me and for all of you to give our lives to the Lord this week and say, Father, if there is any shadow that has crept in, if there is any distraction that's become a part of my life, if I become too absorbed in my problems or my joys, this week, call me back to yourself. Let's begin our time of revival with a time of prayer. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, how very grateful we are for all that is ours in Jesus Christ. Salvation now, glory to come, help for every day, hope a calling to a life of significance and worth and value. Yet, Father, we know that as busy as life is this day, it is so easy for us to take our eyes off of you. It seems but an instant, but, Father, what can happen in that instant? Oh, how we pray that this day 
You would knit our hearts together in worship and praise of your name. You would also speak to us, challenge us, bring us into the greatest intimacy with you that we've ever had. Father, we pray that by the time we finish this week, we will truly be able to say there has never been a time in our lives when we were closer to you than we are right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning to you. Everybody okay? I've never been to New Orleans Seminary. I expected those brown robes and the hoods and the rope around the waist thing. I, I, I didn't. And the shaved thing in the back of the head. Some of you already started that. That's, that's nice. <laughs> Dr. Kelly. I don't know if that was dress code or not. Isn't it great to know that uh, we gather together and we're immediately at his feet in the throne room, thanking him for what he is and what he's done. I just want to give a word to those of you who have come with weak knees this week, who have come with weak hearts, and you don't have uh, that spiritual zeal that you think you're supposed to have because you're in the ministry. And I just want to encourage you um, to come to the well and let him feed you and give you uh, life and restoration. And uh, Dr. Luter, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I want to thank Gary for the invitation. I say to you, I'd like to worship. Let's stand together here. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in the heaven and earth. Be exalted, O God, and your kingdom. 
Oh 
Thank you, Michael. Thank you, my brothers. Let's give them another hand. Well, good morning. How's everyone doing today? Amen. Giving obedience to God, my Father, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior of my life, to my friend, my brother, loved and the man that I thank the world of and appreciate so very much for not only what he's done in the life of this campus, but what he's done in my life. Uh, Dr. Chuck Kelly, I appreciate you, brother, and I thank God for you and your friendship and your mentorship and your prayers and encouragement in my life. To the faculty and the staff here at New Orleans Seminary, to all the students and those who work on this seminary grounds, I am indeed delighted and excited because I have been invited to be here with you for this uh, spring revival. I am so honored out of all the people that uh, Dr. Kelly know around this city, state, and nation that he would invite this street preacher from the Lord Night Ward. Amen. I am so honored to have this privilege. Uh, Dr. Dave, you just don't know how much a joy this is for me, and I thank you, my brother, for this privilege. I pray that you'll be in prayer with me and for me as God uh, speaks to my heart. I'll try to speak to you uh, uh, during the next uh, few days as we share. Uh, but terribly, uh, just due to get to see you in the Word of God uh, this week, and I pray that uh, something we say may just encourage you and revive you uh, in the Lord. I uh, prayed about uh, what God would have me to say this week, and I just prayed that it, was on, it would be on target and that would be something that would just bless you uh, in the word of the Lord. Now, I'm used to getting amens at Franklin Avenue, and so I, I didn't know how it was going to be on the first day, so I brought my amen corner right over here to my left. <laughs> didn't want to take any chances the first day, uh, um, so I got, uh, I've got my amen corner right over there with Miss Chocolate and all the rest of those folk there from Franklin Avenue, uh, just in case y'all stand you with y'all amens on this Tuesday mornings. I brought my amens with me. It's all, you know, saying amen to a preacher is like saying sick him to a dog. <laughs> amen, brother. We look, we just, it, it helps us out. It, it, that Olympia, it helps us out when we hear you respond, uh, to what we're saying. I'm so honored to have several members of the Franklin Avenue Baptist Church family with me. Will you stand those folk here from Franklin Avenue? They're over, all over the place. Thank y'all so very much for being here. Amen. And then it's always a joy to uh, share with you the love, the lady I'm in love with. I tell you, I thank God for this lady. She has been a, a great, great part. My best friend, my greatest critic, the one who just uh, have uh, just molded me into the man and the preacher and the husband and father that I am today. I love her dear. The love of my life, the apple of my eye, my prime rib, my good thing. Uh, my wife Elizabeth. You stand, baby? Turn your Bibles with me this morning to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, as we share in this first day of revival. I looked up the word revival, and I found these definitions, a reviving or being revived, a bringing or coming back into use. Michael, a restoration to vigor and activity. Revival, to return to life. And that's what we're about this week. Oftentimes as believers, we, we give and we give and we give and we give. And, and the truth of the matter is sometimes we give out. And we find ourselves like a gas needle on our car, or truck, or SUV when it, it's at foot at one time. But you keep going and going and going. And eventually that needle is going to go to empty. You mentioned you've got to pull into a service station. You've got to pull into a gas station and you've got to refuse and bring that needle back to full. Well, that's what needs to happen to us. As believers, we, we give and we give and we give and we give. And, and sometimes if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves going on E. And we find ourselves just going through the motion, just, 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 just putting our lives on automatic pilot. Eventually, my friend, you need to pull into God's service station and be revived and be renewed. Someone said it like this one day, Dr. Kelly, if you are not as close to God as you used to be, guess who moved? If you are not as close to God as you used to be, guess who moved? And that's why we need revival, so we can get back close to God and be the people of God that God has called us, Dr. Ken, to be. In Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 10, 
Very familiar passage of Scripture. The one I pray that will bless you and challenge you in the time that we have remaining today. If you have it, please say amen. amen. Well, that sounds good. That sounds good. You'll find these similar words. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and I answered oh Lord God thou knowest again he said unto me prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and will cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied. I preached as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bones. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied, as he commanded me, and breath came unto them, and they lived and stood up on their feet, an exceeding great army. Father, and I got Master, we come this morning. As we come, we want to thank you and praise you for Brother Michael and the praise team and how they blessed us. And song, God, we appreciate the, uh, the ministry that they have blessed us with today. Now, God, as we prepare in this time of preaching, as always, God, I pray that you allow me to decrease as you increase, Father. Let them not see Fred, but God, let them see Christ. To the end, that you may be glorified, the saints of God may be edified, Satan may be horrified, and lost sinners will come to repentance. And Master, when it's all said and done, we be very careful to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' precious name, we pray, and for our sake, and again, let the people of God say, Amen. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Just for a little while, in the time that we have remaining on this first day of this campus revival, we want to preach from the subject, How to Revive Dry Bones. How to Revive Dry Bones. Any dry bones in the house? Don't raise your hand, please. Don't raise your hand. Somebody don't look at you funny. Dr. Kelly, this 37th chapter of Ezekiel contains one of the most well-known stories in all of the Bible. If you're a student of the Scripture, God, if you've ever attended Sunday school, if you've been raised in the church, I have no doubt, my brothers and my sisters, you've heard of this story that Ezekiel records in this 37th chapter, where Ezekiel records the vision of the valley of the dry bones. And many of you, Stephanie, may have heard, may have heard this story in song before you ever knew it was in the Bible. This talk I remember as a little boy growing up in Greater Mount Carmel Baptist Church. Right down the Lord Night Ward on the corner of Fostall and Galvin. So we had a male chorus and brother Dr. Kelly, I remember I was about 10, 11 years old and I used to love to hear our male chorus singing. They would march from the back of the church and actually like they would get there in the choir and one of the favorite songs I would love to hear them sing was this song that would talk about the valley of the dry bones and, and I'm not a singer like Michael or the praise team but, but they would say something like this. Oh, the bones, oh, the bones, oh, the dry bones, oh, the bones, oh, the bones, oh, the dry bones, oh, the bones, oh, the bones, oh, the dry bones. Listen to the word of the Lord. How many of y'all ever heard that song? I mean, was, was that all right, Mike? Oh, that, that pretty, all right, pretty. We, we may do a duet tomorrow, but we may do a duet I, I, I didn't know it was in the Bible. I was a kid growing up in church. Now, thinking it was just a song, and, and I didn't realize till years later, and I got going to Sunday school and reading the scripture, that this was actually a story in the Bible. And my brothers and my sisters, even though it's a popular story, I can tell you it's really a sad story. It's sad because here are individuals that shattered, who are, who once had life. 
about the living. Here were individuals who, who once had skin and who once had muscles. Uh, here were individuals who once had strength and who once had vigor and vim and vitality. But look at them now. Dry, brittle, lifeless, spiritless. And the Lord puts a preacher, not a politician, a preacher. Now, not a doctor, a preacher. Not, 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 not someone uh, 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 teaching at the college campus, but, but a preacher. Not some psychologist or an analyst. God puts a preacher in the midst of the valley of these dry bones and asks the preacher a question. Son of man, can these bones live? Can these bones be revived? And my brother and my sister, the same question can be asked of many of us today. But if we're honest with ourselves, many of us can identify with these children of Israel. Many of us can identify, if we're honest with ourselves, with these folk in our text. Because many of us are like dead men walking. We've lost our vim. We've lost our vigor. And we can find vitality if it slapped us in the face. We hate to admit it, but we're dry spiritually. We're dry spiritually. The joy of the Lord, Dr. Taylor, it seems like a thing of the past. Sheila, unhibited praise is a distant memory. Abundant life is something you hear other people talk about, other congregations talk about, other churches and other pastors and preachers and evangelists talk about, but you're not experiencing it in your own life. And revival is something that happens to everybody else, but has not happened yet to you. So you're here today on this first day of this campus revival. And you're looking for an answer. And you're looking for some hope. Therefore, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, I put myself in Ezekiel's shoes. And if the question was asked of me today, Fred, can these bones live? Can these bones uh, be revived? And the answer would be yes. But if it's going to happen, several things must happen first. Hence the subject of our message today, how to revive uh, dry bones. I want you to see, my brothers and my sisters, several things in this text today. If dry bones are going to be revived, several things must happen. First of all, now, you, know, you listen to this one well. This is a, uh, this is a great revelation from God. I, 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 I prayed and, and tarried and, and sought the Lord all night on this first part. If dry bones are going to be revived, number one, it's real heavy. Get ready. Dry bones must realize that they're dry. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that deep. Whoa, that was, whew, that was deep. That was deep. That was deep. Dry bones must realize that they're dry. It doesn't have to take a rocket scientist. It doesn't have to take a committee. It doesn't have to take a group of folks to look you in the eye and say, brother, what's wrong? Sister, what's wrong? It doesn't have to take your wife or your, or your husband or your children or a family member and say, what's going on with you? You're not the same. Your smile is gone. Your joy is gone. Your, your happiness is gone. My friend, if dry bones are going to be revived, dry bones must realize that they're dry. In other words, to thine own self be true. There was no doubt, Dr. Kelly, that these bone, bones were very dry. These bones were lifeless. The, 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 these bones were spiritless. And that's the same way with us, my friend. No one should have to tell you that you're dry. No one should have to tell you that you're lifeless. No one should have to tell you that your joy is gone. Many of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we're just going through the motions. Our lives are like we're on automatic pilot. We're like robots. We walk around the campus, going to the same old class, taking the same old subjects, eating the same old food, doing the same old routine, teaching the same old stuff, doing it over and over and over and over again. It's like we can put our lives on automatic pilot, and as a result of that, we're dry, we're brittle, and life is no longer in us. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know what the problem may be in your life, but the problem may have been in my life. Maybe I'm just trying to do it all by yourself. Maybe you're trying to handle it all by yourself. Maybe you're under too much stress. Maybe you're trying to do it all by yourself. But whatever the reason, my brothers and my sisters, we're dry, we're brittle, and we're lifeless. However, my friend, the first step to recovery is to realize your condition and to admit your condition. That's what Moses did in Exodus chapter 3, 
When God told Moses, Moses, go down to Pharaoh and let my people go. So when Moses realized his condition, Moses said, I can't do that. He realized his, he realized his condition. That's what David did in Psalm 51 after David committed the, uh, adultery with Bathsheba. David realized he was on a rut. David realized he was on a pit. And David cried out in Psalm 51, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy tender mercy. Blot out my transgression. Wash me from my iniquity. Clear me from my sin. Cause I did it. I acknowledge my transgression. And my sin is ever before me. That's what the prodigal son did in Luke chapter 15, when he found himself in the halls then found himself a, a feeding flock. He was in his father's house, living large, doing good, but he wanted to get away and found himself sleeping with the halls. And he came to himself and said, what am I doing in this situation? Why am I here? I had it better at my daddy's house. And he went back home to his daddy. He realized his situation. Oh, my friend, if you want your dry bones are going to be revived, stop making excuses. Stop passing the buck. Stop blaming somebody else so that an own self be true. It's not the pastor. It's you. It's not the uh, professor. It's you. It's not your wife. It's you. It's not your husband. It's you. It's not the church. It's you. So that an own self be true. Like the songwriter said, it's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother. Not my father. But it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need a prayer. If dry bones are going to be revived, dry bones must realize that they're dry. Can I get two amens? Praise the Lord. Number two, if dry bones are going to be revived, not only must dry bones realize that they're dry, but secondly, dry bones must hear the Word of God. Dry bones must hear the Word of God. Look at verse 4 in our text. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones and say to them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. My friend, if you want to live again, you must hear the word of God. If you want to be revived, you must hear the word of God. Notice what God told Ezekiel in our text. Preacher, preach until the dry bones the Word of God. Preacher, if they're going to be revived. Preacher, if they're going to live again. If their lives are going to change. If their situations are going to change. If they're going to get out of their rut. They must hear the Word of God. Not the latest in politics, but the Word of God. Not the latest denominational issues, but the Word of God. Not topics from Reader's Digest, a Time and Newsweek, and Ebony Magazine. Those things are good and have this place, but it's not going to help dry bones. If dry bones are going to be revived, they must hear the Word of God. Words that will bring nourishment to dry bones. Words that will bring strength to dry bones. Words that will bring life to lifeless bones. Words like Psalms 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the un godly, the standing in the way of sinners, the sitting in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Words like Psalms 23 and 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Words like Psalms 27 and 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? Words like Psalms 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord uh, delivered them out of them all. Word like Psalms 37 and 25. I have been younger, but now I'm old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of God. Word like Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is set on thee, because they trust in the Lord. Word like Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait uh, upon the Lord uh, shall Renew their strength. That shall run up with wings as eagles. That shall run and not get weary. That shall walk and not faint. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of God. Word like Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. Word like John 15 and 7. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Words like Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the 
the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of earth. Word like Romans 8 and 32. If God be for us, who in the world can be against us? Oh, dry bones, hear the word of God. Words like 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There had no temptation taken you, such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But we are with the temptation. Also make a way to escape so that you and that you and that you might be able to bear it. Words like 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. But you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Words like Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who not only loved me, but he gave himself for me. Why is that Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Why is that first Peter 5 and 8? Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking and who we made it out. All dry bones here. The word of God. Yes. Yes. Because the word of God gives life. The word of God gives hope. The word of God gives strength. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But God's word shall stand forever. Oh, preacher. Can these Bones live. Yes, but there are two more things that must happen. I got eight minutes for two points. Lord help me, Jesus. <laughs> dry bones must realize that they're dry. Dry bones must hear the word of God. Number three, dry bones must respond to the word of God. Look at verses seven and eight. So I prophesied. I preached. As I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. If dry bones are going to be revived, dry bones must respond to the word of God. My friend, there's power in the word of God. Even dead Brittle dry bones come to life when they hear the word of God. Might because there's power in the word of God. Romans 1 and 16 said, Mr. Chuck, I'm not ashamed of the power, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But there's the power of God into salvation. To everyone that believes it, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Hebrews 4 and 12, my brother said, uh, the word of God is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Oh, my friend, the word of God brings light to dry bones. However, those bones must respond to the word of God. In other words, if you want to live an abundant life, if you want to be all that God wants you to be, you must not only be a hearer of the word, but you must also be a doer of the word of God. Don't just study it. Do it. Don't just read it. Do it. Don't just sit down to prepare a message. Do what the Word says to do. Don't just meditate on it. Don't just memorize it. You've got to walk it. You've got to talk it. You've got to live it. It's not enough to come to church and come to Sunday school and come to chapel and hear a good sermon and hear a good message. But you've got to take it with you. Take it out of the doors. Take it in the Gentilly neighborhood. Take it into the highways and the byways of life. Take it to the restaurant. Take it to the mall. Take it to the French Quarter. Wherever you go, let the Word of God live in your life. Oh, my friend, let the sermon minister to you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Obey what the Word of God says to do. Let's see, New Orleans, what happened to these dry, brittle, lifeless bones when they heard the Word of God. Ezekiel says in verse 7, when he preached the Word of God, the Bible said, Dr. Kelly, that he heard a noise. Then he said he felt something shaking. Just, just picture this. He's preaching to these dry bones all around. As he preaches the word of them, all of a sudden, he hears some noise. Then he hears some shaking. And Ezekiel looked around and said, Lord, I thought this was a Baptist church. And then he hears a noise. Then he felt something shaking. 
Then he said, because our bones come together, bone to bone to bone to bone. I said, I just need to go there just for a little while. You know what I really think Ezekiel saw? I believe he saw this. Well, the toe bone connected to the foot bone and the foot bone connected to the ankle bone and the ankle bone connected to the leg bone and the leg bone connected to the knee bones and the knee bones connected to the thigh bones. And, I'm really saying that I'm trying to get on your braces. To the waist bone, the waist bone connected to the chest bone and the chest bone connected to the shoulder bones and the shoulder bone connected to the elbow bone and the elbow bone connected to the wrist bone and the wrist bone connected to the finger bones and the bones and the bones and the bones came together and the bones, the bones came together! When these dry bones heard the word of God, these bones came together from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I've got to prepare to close out. But I don't care who you are today. I don't care how you came in this place today. I don't care what your situation may be. I promise, I promise you, if you hear and respond to the word of God, even dead, brittle, dry bones come to life when they hear the word of God. But wait, there's still one more thing that must happen to these dry bones. Dry bones must realize that they're dry. Verse 2. Dry bones must hear the word of God. Verse 4. Dry bones must respond to the word of God. Verses 7 and 8. And then finally, dry bones must be filled with the Spirit of God. Dry bones must be filled with the Spirit of God. Look at verses 9 and 10. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded. And the breath came upon them, and they lived. And look what the Bible said. And these dry, brittle, lifeless bones, stood up on their feet and became an exceeding great army. Oh, my friend, if you're going to be revived, if you're going to be restored, if you're going to be renewed, if you're going to be put to usefulness again, not only must you realize that you're dry, not only must you hear the word of God, not only must you respond to the word of God, but you must be filled with the spirit of God. My friend, when you feel with the Spirit of God, you can't help but be renewed. You can't help but be restored. You can't help but be revived. When you feel with the Spirit of God, you don't walk the same. You don't talk the same. You don't live the same. You don't act the same. Now notice these were the same bones, folks. These were the same bones that were once dead, the same bones that were once dry, the same bones that were once brittle, but now they had a new spirit within them. And the Bible said they stood upon their feet and exceeding a great army. And that's what happened, my brothers and my sisters, to every child of God that hears and responds to the word of God. Same bones, but a new spirit. Same bones, but a new attitude. Same bones, but a new determination. Same bones, but a new outlook. Same bones, but a new value system. Same bones, but they're brand new. They've been revived. They've been restored. They've been renewed. They've been rejuvenated. They've been resurrected. Because when Jesus Christ comes in and the Spirit of God comes in, we are never, never the same. And guess what, my friend? If you're here today and you're suffering... If you're here today and you're suffering from the dry bone syndrome, your talk is dry, your smile is dry, your life is dry, your marriage is dry, your single life is dry, your ministry is dry, your, your relationship with God is dry, your relationship with friends are dry, and it's all because, my friend, you are dry. Well, guess what, brothers? Guess what, sisters? Don't despair. Don't lose hope. You're in the right place at the right time. This is revival, isn't it? This is revival, isn't it? This is revival. You may have come in here in the valley, but you can walk out here on the mountaintop because you're in the right place at the right time. Because the fire of revival is in this place. The blessings of revival are in this chapel. The blessings of God are in this place. But you've got to realize that you're dry. You've got to hear the word of God. You've got to respond to the word of God. And you must be led by the Spirit of God. Oh, preacher, can these 
Bones live. Yes. 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 They can live, God. Now, oh, my brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you. God said we can live, so let's live. And God said we can stand up and be an exceeding great army. So come on, soldiers. We need you in the battle. Come on, soldiers. Report for duty. Come on, soldiers. We need you to witness. Come on, soldiers. We need you to pray. Come on, soldiers. We need you to fight the good fight of faith. For we are soldiers in the army. We have to fight. Although we have to cry. We have to hold up. We have to hold up. We have to hold up the, the blood stained banner. We've got to hold it up until we die. So come on, brothers. Report for duty. Come on, sisters. Report for duty. Come on, professors. Report for duty. Come on, faculty. Report for duty. Come on, saints of God. Report for duty. You're in the army now. Yes. 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 Can these bones live? Yes. Father, we thank you and we praise you for reviving dry bones, brittle bones, lifeless bones. But God, we thank you that just as you did in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, you could do it in this place. There's some brothers that need reviving. There's some sisters. There's some pastors. There's some staff members. Some music evangelists, God. God, there's some professors, God. There's some teachers. We need revival, God. God, we're struggling, we're hurting. God, we're trying to fake a smile. Because deep on the inside where nobody can see, we're dry, we're brittle, and we're lifeless. But oh God, we thank you for revival. And we thank you and we're glad to know that you can revive us again. Do it in this place. Do it among these people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.